Hello everyone. This video will show how to sketch the graph of y equals inverse cosine of x. Now we remember that this notation that we have right here is read as inverse cosine of x or this one right here. This could also be read as arc cosine of x. So I'm going to go ahead and write that down here. Now we remember that this notation that we have right here is not the same as 1 over cosine. Because this 1 over cosine x is secant x. Now let's jump right into how we sketch the graph of y equals inverse cosine of x. So we are given this graph of cosine x. So this one right here is cosine x. And we are going to get the inverse of cosine from this graph that we have right here. So what are we going to do here first is that I'm going to trace this um, y equals cosine x graph using a pencil. Okay, in order that we can get the inverse cosine of x right here, we remember that the graph of an inverse function is symmetric with respect to the line of symmetry, y equals x. So what I would do is I will reflect this y equals cosine x graph along this line of symmetry. So I'm going to go ahead and fold this. Okay, so once I folded it, I am going to trace the graph at the back of the paper. And I'm going to open it up. And if you notice, the graph of y equals sine x has been reflected along the y equals x graph. So I'm going to go ahead and trace this graph right here. So this is the inverse graph of y equals cosine x. So this is its inverse graph. Now if you notice, this inverse graph, the one in green, is not a function. The reason for that is it fails the vertical line test. So if I put a pencil right here, if you notice, this green graph is touching the pencil four times. One, two, three, four. So it fails the vertical line test, so it is not a function. This means that we need to restrict this graph here so that its inverse or this green graph is a function. There could be multiple ways that we can restrict this, but mathematicians have agreed a way of restricting this function that we have up here. So this is how we can restrict this so that this green graph is a function. If you notice, the green graph is already a function. Now let's determine the coordinates for this um, points that we have on the red um, graph. Now we remember that this point right here is a reflection from this side. So this is the re this, these two are reflection of each other along the y equals x line. And this dot right here is a reflection from the one across down here. Now we are going to determine the coordinate for these two dots so that we can determine the coordinate of the dots on the red graph. So in this point right here, we get a pi, and then this is on negative 1. And then this dot right here is going to be on x is 0, and y is 1. So this tells us that this red dot right here is the inverse of this coordinate. That means we just have to flip it. So this would be 1 and 0. Well, this dot right here is a reflection of this. So when we say inverse, we just have to flip the x and the y value. So the coordinate for this is negative 1 pi. So then from here, we can determine the domain and range for this y equals arc cosine or y equals inverse cosine of x. Now looking at this red graph right here, which represents 
y equals r cosine of x, we can go ahead and say that the range for this graph would be, it starts from 0 all the way to pi. Well, our domain for this graph will be starting from negative 1. So it's going to start from negative 1 all the way to 1. So rewriting the equation for inverse cosine of x, we then could say that the value for the inverse cosine of x or its range would only come from 0 all the way to pi, while its x values would come from negative 1 all the way to 1. Now let's draw the x and y coordinate here. So this one right here is 0, this one right here is pi over 2, this one right here is pi. It says that inverse cosine of x is defined from 0 to pi. So that means that's from 0 all the way to pi. So that means it's only defined on the first and second quadrant. That means it is not defined on third and fourth. So this tells us that the values for inverse cosine of x or arc cosine of x would range from 0 to pi. So they're only found on the first and second quadrant. Now let's look at the graph of inverse cosine of x or arc cosine of x using decimals. If you notice, the two graphs here, the one that we did on paper pencil version, is pretty similar to the one that we get on Desmos. So this is the graph of y equals inverse cosine of x or y equals r cosine of x.